Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video we went through the servo motor for the most complete starter kit for the UNO. So in this video we're going to go through the ultrasonic sensor. I'm actually quite excited for this one. So in my first year of electrical engineering, I built a robot that used an ultrasonic sensor, which is literally exact, on pretty much exactly this. And what it would do is it would drive forward and when it would detect an object or a wall, it would then spin around in reverse. So from what I know, it shoots out an ultrasonic sound and then waits to hear it back. And then obviously the length of time that it takes to hear it back is when um, is how it knows how far away or close it is. The actual in-depth code for this is going to be quite deep and well above definitely my pay grade, if not yours as well. So I'm assuming they're going to use some functions and other stuff here, libraries, to call upon stuff so that we don't have to worry about all of that. So let's have a look at it. So lesson nine, ultrasonic sensor module. So the ultrasonic sensor is a great uh, the ultrasonic sensor is great for all kinds of projects that need distant measurement or avoiding obstacles, for example. The HCSR04 is inexpensive and easy to use since we will be using a library specifically designed for these sensors. I thought so, yeah. I, I knew it. What I did in my project was uh, ugh, very challenging. Very, very challenging. Okay, so we're going to use four female to male wires. I hope this is correct again because last time it was a mistake. I'm guessing it will be because of the fact that we've already got header pins here. So the fact that we've already got pins here, it makes sense to use female. The ultrasonic sensor module HCSR04 provides two centimeters to 400 centimeters. Wow, okay, so two centimeters, you're talking about there. 400 centimeters, wow, that's quite far. That's uh, surprising, because this is, that's a very good bit of kit. Okay, non-contact measurement function. The range and accuracy can reach three millimeters. Range and accuracy. Okay, not sure I understand that. The module includes ultrasonic transmitters, receiver and control circuit. The basic principle of work is using an IO trigger for at least 10 US high level signal. Okay, I don't know what that means. The module automatically sends, 40, uh, sends eight 40 kilohertz and detect, wow and detects whether there is a pulse signal back. If the signal back through high level, time of high output IO duration is the time. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not understanding any of this. Okay, so test distance is equal to high level time times velocity of sound divided by two. Okay, so like I said, this is, this is too much for me. Just looking at that gives me anxiety, so I'm gonna skip that. Forgive me if, uh, you wanted to go through that. There's a difference between, you know, like being able to use the sensor and being able to program it versus knowing in detail how it works, if that makes sense. So for example, like you can be very good at computing, but I have no idea how a CPU works. So yeah, I'm not too interested in the theory. In fact, I'm not at all interested in the theory. I'm, I'm more interested in the practical side of things. Okay, so we've got Nice, so it's actually labeled on there as well. So it's labeled there VCC, trig, echo, and ground. So we've got VCC going to five volts. We've got trig going to D12. We've got echo going to D11 and ground obviously going to ground. So this should be super simple. I assume that we're just connecting it straight to the uh, Arduino board. And it said male to female jumper wire. So let's use the same wires that they've used. So we'll go with red. Male to female. Okay, so we've got red, we need brown. This is brown for ground. And they actually have a black one, we'll use black for ground. Black for ground, remove the brown. And then we've got blue and green. Here you go, blue and green. Cool, so, oh dear. One of mine's broke somehow. Don't know how that happened, but it, it will still work. It just means that you might get a short if they come into contact with each other, which isn't ideal. Okay, anyways. So we've got green going to echo. It's nice that the pins are actually labeled. Okay. And then we've got blue for trig. Okay. And then we've got black for ground and red for five volts. You see why the plastic on them is, is pretty much necessary because otherwise you can, if, the, if they're touching without the plastic, you can easily get short circuits. So the fact that only one of them is broken is fine. Okay. And then now we just do the same connections over here. So we're talking about black to ground and so this is where the color scheme, I always stick to a, the same color scheme in my mind. I tend to always follow the diagram as well. So red for five volts is there. Okay. And then blue is going to D12. 
and green is going to d11 there you go and that's it now we can stick this on a robot and we can detect some collisions so there's our wiring diagram so now let's get our code and plug in my arduino okay so we've got a zip folder again here which i'm assuming is going to cause me the same problems that it's been causing me for all of these these tutorials here i'll try and upload it without it but what i can see already is i can already see or see i can i can already see hashtag include so it's gonna throw up an error if i hit upload here so let's just do it anyways oh i didn't yeah so no such file in directory so what we need to do is again i show this on every video so if you haven't watched those we go into this zip file here come and get this header file extract it and put it in yeah let's just, we'll just extract it into here okay so that's the header file there cut that and put it in this folder so put it in the same place as your arduino file and then now we hit upload again Okay, so it says updates available for some of my libraries. So let me try and fix this. So I don't know why it's thrown up an error again. I mean, I literally just used Arduino, the IDE, two, three hours ago. So, okay. All right, I'm updating this. Okay, so I'll try here upload again. All right, so what's the problem here? Um, I, LD returned one exit status, collect2.exe. What's it saying here? I can't really see. So undefined reference to SRO4 distance. So I'm thinking it needs everything that's inside this, this folder here for some reason. This .cpp, so this .cpp is a C++ file, if I remember correctly. So I need, probably I need that as well. Just frustrating really. Like why not just include this in the instructions? Okay, so. Cut that, put that in there. Okay, try again. Voila, we have success. Okay. So, you can see I've got a bunch of LEDs lit up here. I don't know why these LEDs are lit up. What did they, what are they, TX and RX? L, TX, RX. So I've got two LEDs lit up brightly. Okay. Does it give any sort of explanation in the code? Okay, using a library designed for sense these sensors will make our code short and simple. After one, please open up the program in the code folder. Click upload. See lesson five for details about program uploading if there are any errors. So basically you knew there was gonna be errors. Before you can run this, make sure that you have installed HCSRO4 library. Okay, so let's just make sure I've got that library. So HCSRO4. I assume that's it there. I mean, I don't know actually. Library for non-blocking, controlling an ultrasonic sensor like. Okay, so there's a few. Okay, there's the one. Oh, there's, there's even more. Uh, I'll install, I don't know actually. That one already said that I had it installed. I think. HCSO for ultrasonic sensor. Well, now I'm sure it's just going to be getting confused now if I have multiple libraries. But there's a few of them with the same name. So that's a problem. Okay, let's hit upload again. Okay, so I've got two LEDs both on again. So we've got, I can, I can see here in the code, I haven't really had a look at it yet, but we're initializing a serial port. They will wait in one second. Then after that, we're collecting the data taken from a function and putting it into a variable a and then we're printing out that variable a which i assume is a distance and then we're also printing out the word the letters cm signed for centimeters so we're printing out the distance in centimeters so if we open here up the serial monitor which it hasn't asked us to do yet but i'm assuming it will do in the in the code okay so it says open the monitor, then you can see the data as below. <laughs> That's funny. I suppose it does sound like below, right? But below, as data as below. Okay. Uh, click the serial mon monitor button to turn on the serial monitor. The basics about the serial monitor are introduced. Okay, fine. So yeah, we click serial monitor up here. And, oh, okay, nice. So it is reading. So, okay, so 
it's now flashing whilst I've got the serial monitor open. So it's reading something as 50. So I'm pointing it now towards my, just pointing it towards that, which that is accurate actually. That is um, probably exactly 40, 40 centimeters. Sorry. So now if I put my finger in front of it, or my hand in front of it, it's giving me a three to six, oscillating between three and 10 centimeters away, which is yeah, roughly accurate. If I put it right in front of it, it throws up the error. So it's coming back as 2,200 centimeters away. So if you're designing your code, you need to make sure that, for example, when it reads, you know, above 2,000 centimeters, then you know that it's actually in something. So you've got to get it to go into an error state there. But that's really cool. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. I've got some great ideas for stuff with ultrasonic sensors. And this is brilliant. Okay, so we haven't really had any practice up until now writing to the serial monitor. So let me just show you, for example, some of the stuff you could easily do. So here, you know what, you're writing centimeters. You can easily change that to center meters and then I can hit upload again. Okay, so now I open up the serial monitor. And so you see here, 45 centimeters. So you can do stuff like that. Obviously, if you wanted to add a space, you can put a space there. So here it's reading. Okay, so what it's doing here is this delay is telling it basically print to the screen only once a second. So if I make that 100, it will print to the screen 100 times a second. So let's hit upload. And then we open up the serial monitor again. There you go. So it's now printing every 10 times a second. And when you have, I mean, when you're dealing with actual like robotic stuff, like with my robot, I was making it read it at least 20 times a second. Because firstly, you might get like an error. You see that? So it is, it's very accurate. Like even just putting my, my finger in front of it for a few seconds, you can see that it's recording the four second, the four centimeter, four, seven, nine. So, I wonder how far away I can point it. Okay, so this is about a meter away, my wall. And you see I say in about 80. I mean, you're not gonna need to detect something. I don't think anyway, it's from 80 centimeters away. I've got plans to turn one of my um, my kids, um, those ride-along cars, it's an electric uh, ride-along car with a battery. I plan on I would like to turn that into an autonomous one. So using something like this would be really cool. So, you know, if you had, if you put ultrasonic sensors on the front and sides and had it detect this, this would be amazing. Okay, so I don't really know how to do if statements and stuff in C++, but what I'd like to do, should I try it? Okay, let's give it a go. So if statement in Arduino, here you guys can learn along with me. So we just do if, so it's exactly the same as C. Okay, that's fine. So let's just copy this if statement. So what I'm going to do now is inside this loop, I'm going to put if and then, so we're going to say if A is less than, and then let's put 10. Then we're going to copy this serial print. Again, if you're not too familiar with programming, don't worry about this, but I'm going to put crash like that. Okay, let's hit upload and see how I do. So here we've got our 44 centimeters. And so now if I put my hand in front of it, crash. <laughs> that is brilliant. Man, I'm really looking forward to finishing this tutorial. This is fantastic. So obviously where I've put crash here, you could do other stuff. Like you could end the program. You could cause the robot to reverse, call a function to make the motors on the robot go backwards. Loads of great stuff. So, and if you're interested, you know, I did do some tutorials a couple of months ago on my program. It's called the Azura Robot. On my sorry on my youtube channel check it out i went through some of this stuff in c programming but yeah i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna do some arduino stuff this is fantastic so let's crash okay is there anything else i can do with the code so here's obvious you could obviously change the pins if you wanted to use different pins you know you could change 11 to 10 for example here so if i change this to, to 10 now it won't work All right so you got nothing Okay, wait, it's detecting. But you can see anyways, it's, it's coming up with zero centimeters. 
but then if I just move this pin 11 over to pin 10 and then it will work fine there you go 45 centimeters and then crash this is brilliant what a great tutorial I'm thoroughly thoroughly enjoying this all right guys if you are enjoying this as well leave a like I appreciate it and yeah I shall see you guys in the next one what's the next one I'm always intrigued gets me motivated to edit the video and then get to the next one so the next tutorial is membrane switch module no idea what that is but it sounds cool all right guys thanks for watching see you later peace